Um, good afternoon, and thank you again so much for the privilege to be here and see all the young people. You're the future. <laughs> Um, I'd like to tell you about this little special project that has got a very big place in my heart and, um, and I hope I can bring over eight years of work in ten minutes, so please bear with me. Danun, just to explain to you where it is in South Africa, if that is South Africa, then Cape Town is in the far end, in the corner of it. And in that corner, the yellow bit, is the um, area that we're working in, and that little yellow dot there is Danun. And the noon is run about 91 hectares in South Africa, in Cape Town, and very dense area. It was a post-apartheid um, community, so it was designed after the apartheid uh, regime. It had strong edges, you can see a national highway, railway line, and other roads that's running through, that, so it was very much contained. It also had a very clear structure, it was designed by a designer. Um, so it means the bone structure is there, and you can add to it. If you've got a good design, you can always add to it. Um, government provided housing for people. They get the land and the house for free to kind of like make up for the apartheid pressure that we had put on them. But you can see the type of houses that was built in that community. Well, this is what's happening today already. It's spilling literally out of its own skin. What we did in 2012 to 2015 is to do a research study. We had to first go in and find out what's going on in there. As a designer, you cannot treat your, um, the person that you're looking after if you don't know what they are all, all about. So we did a long research study and all the information that came out of it. Um, our project was in 2014, one of the World Design Capital projects in Cape Town. And our mayor also recognized it as a sustainability project in 2016. So this was the bigger project of the noon in terms of the information finding. So what did we learn from the noon? We learned that there was incredible rapid growth, far beyond what any planner can plan for. It was designed in 1995. By the year 2000, the 3,000 families that it was designed for was already there. By 2014, we were sitting with 16,000 families. That is around about 80,000 people that is now living in the same place. All the spaces is absolutely full. Why do people come here? Because there's actually a public transport system that's actually running, and it's connecting this area to the city, to the airport. It also had a strong structure, so you could understand where you fit in into the big picture. The communities developed bit by bit as the place developed, and they were actually strong community groups. What was really interesting for us was people were starting to break down the buildings the government built them, and they built their own apartments that they then start renting out. So therefore, we are positive. We have started to turn people into developers, and that's what we wanted to do after the apartheid. We also had an incredible human resources, people with um, excitement, people want to do stuff, so having that community behind you is incredible. But with that comes overburdened services. If it was designed only for 3,000 families, which is 14,000 people, then it can't cope with 80,000 people. How do we go behind the, uh, beyond that? Also, all the spaces that was left over for public facilities were used up. People overnight would move in and build their shacks, and therefore those facilities are then taken away. So it was very difficult for the community to grow beyond just being housing community. We had to therefore totally reevaluate our norms and our thinking. We can't think about a place having a big place, play place. That play school needs to be for everybody, for everything. Everything had to do double the amount of work. Unfortunately, also with this amount of people in this small area, a lot of un uncomfortable social issues develops. And that is why we need public spaces where people can meet and get to know each other better. But the amazing thing for me from Danoon was the incredible people there. Do you know that there was two movies made in Danoon by people that won international competitions? So although the picture looks a little bit messy, we had one little block that we could do something with. And we had to move that block like the little game that we used to play when we were small. We had to move it to get the picture we wanted to see. So how did we do that? We now knew all the information that we wanted to do, so we developed a local area framework plan for it. And this is not a plan that's stuck on page. It's a thing that can grow as we move on, because no society is done. Today is just the beginning of tomorrow. 
So what do we do? This framework focused on three primary points, which is the built environment, but we're just focusing on the learning and innovation precinct. This is where we thought we can have the biggest impact from the beginning, because through learning we change. This project um, had loads of ideas through it. The playing field, how you learn through kicking a ball, um, the school, there was only one high school for all of these people, two primary schools, because there's no space. There is just no space to put it in. Um, a quarry, a used, disused quarry, and I still have ideas for that as well, and the community wall is existing. The playing field was actually just a piece of soil, and the first point of call is wanting to change that into a future sports centre. You can see here we started building um, the, the sports centre, and on the other side is the community hall. Again, the only community hall for 80,000 people. And what was important is to make this connection always with things, so that it's not just one thing, it's always a bigger program. What was quite interesting is that people do not understand the scale of things, because they live in small places. So we, they said they wanted to have 12 playing fields, and they want to park 18 buses there when people come. So we made them a little game to scale, and we said, play the game. See how many you can fit in. And they fitted in two, and they went like, okay then, two is enough. Because we could only do two. But the community started understanding that the little bit that they had, they had to use it as max, at the maximum. The second phase, so we had now the sports precinct and the community hall, was the library, where we wanted the innovation center. We would love to have done it in, in one phase, but there's no time or money to really do that, so we did it in different phases. And up to this point, the nearest library was seven kilometers away. So people will use their food money to have to go to the library. That is not right. So now there's a library on their front door. People can do their CV here. People can find out about jobs. Not only that, we believe in equality. If we just deliver um, the same, if it's a lower income development, you do not deliver a lower income project. You still deliver the best you can deliver. And by doing this, we brought in urban sustainability, teaching people about plants and how plants can actually help the water, uh, um, the air, how water can be used practically, and how the building actually fits together bit by bit. But now you can see the library that has gone in there, and it's started to become like a node, a place that can start pulling together. And in the context of the noon, which is everything nearly sort of one story, this started standing out as a beacon of hope. It also shows you that there's a connection between learning, physical learning, emotional learning, and learning through innovation. So to understand that link and how actually everybody grows, not just the little child, but the mother who never had a chance to play with her kid, or the grandmother that can now walk with her child. And we've designed the building such that you can actually break through and start developing the next phase immediately. Designers, we have to think about tomorrow, today. Because if you only think of today, then you're never going to do it. We also involve the community in all of these things. We have what we call the EPWP. It means we get the community involved in actually training them up to help us build the project and also later on kind of like work in the project, which means the community actually are empowered. So, what is this all about? It's about our own future. It's about our children. It's about everybody in terms of education. We have government that can invest in public funding. Through learning, we can change so much because people don't always understand what's going on. But through teaching someone something, you improve inequality. People can now actually work together. The poverty is alleviated because that mother can now actually look after her children more. The child can go to school, get a job eventually. That child can then pay tax. The tax can come back into the system helping and the wheel starts turning. And we start looking after each other. We don't depend on handouts. We start working as communities. So through design, we can change the world. Thank you for the opportunity.